see you guy. So summertime is a great time of year to fish shallow and fish top water. And kayaks can get in that sort of really skinny water and, and deliver really, really great presentations. Uh, we're going to do some of that today here on the upper Chesapeake Bay uh, and a couple of the tributaries, uh, the tidal rivers flowing into the upper bay. Um, one thing I want to get into though is how to do the adjustments for your Torquedo to get it as shallow as possible. Our initial run today, we're actually going out across some pretty big water and you go over, you know, you go over boat wakes, you go over if there's, if there's a good bit of wind, you know, the, the boat kind of goes like this and where the motor is, if that comes up out of the water, you want that as deep as possible. The way that you adjust that is you open up, and in this case, it's the steering triangle. Sometimes it's one of these ring clamps, but the, the part that's in contact with the top of the, the pivot drum is the, the steering triangle in my case. So I'm just scooting that down and that gets it deeper. I have the quick release here that tightens down on that and that's gonna cinch down right nice and tight. So it's, it's secure with my foot control steering. Um, once I get to the place I'm gonna go, I really don't want the prop that deep. I want it, you know, instead of, and, and what is it? It's using that much depth. That's, that's quite a bit of depth. I'm gonna be fishing in water shallower than that. So I will bring this up and then once we get there, after I make that adjustment, I'll show you one more adjustment so you can fish in water and keep the motor running in maybe that much water. Let's go do it. All right, we have arrived. We're going to start fishing. And check my depth. We're not going to have a whole lot of super shallow water quite yet because it's it's uh, it's high tide, but I'm gonna make that adjustment just for just so it's ready. You know, we've made a long run. I'm gonna come back here, loosen the quick release, slide this up. and then slide the steering triangle down. And I know because I've done it a bunch of times what, what looks about right. I'm making sure that it's perpendicular to, to the motor and I'll tighten that back up. The other change I make, and I've already sort of done it, um, is I'm going to turn this around and show you what I do here just to get it part way out. But this is my motor lift. And I will get it different, to different, you know, lengths of just a little bit out of the water. So when it starts operating, and I'll put my key on there real quick and just show you, looking at the back there, it's going to slap at the water a little bit. And that keeps you going nice and slow in super shallow water. I'm gonna take my, my kill switch off here and just show you, instead of needing this much water, which is what I use, the depth I use to the bottom of the skeg to get all the way over here. That's the bottom of the skeg. Yeah, I'm able to keep going in that depth of water. So. That's a big difference. It gives you access to a lot more skinny water and we're gonna get into skinnier water as the tide starts to flush out of this little tidal creek. We'll get up in here, see if we can uh, connect with some largemouth and maybe some snakehead, who knows. on the, the billy goat just working that 
the edge of the grass line as the current rolls out. You can tell by how the kayak's moving, current's doing pretty good. This outgoing tide. So we're basically treating this soft plastic with a 5 aught extra wide gap grip pin hook with the, the Elaztec legs, little flappy flops. The same as we would a hollow bodied frog like this Sprinker. The only difference is um, they both float, they both have little kicking legs, um, but this one just has a much better compression. Like it's just, and, and the sprinkler is a good one, but it's also got two hooks instead of one. And it's easier to drive home one hook than two, especially at a, at a distance. Um, yeah, you can have a really super stout um, rod, but you end up pushing a bait more than anything to, to get it out there. And I, I have greater, a greater casting range with the spinning rod and not needing this crazy hero hook set um, and I can also skip it I know some people say well I can skip a bait caster good for you I cannot um, this does what I need it to do and you know having having the ability to to skip it and get it long distances and not really worry about doing a backflip as I set the hook. It's just a nicer way to frog fish. Shade is always a good thing in summer. This happens to be shallow shade, but still worth a shot. And it's the only, there's someone following it. It's the only sort of depth we have back here in this creek. Look at the left side and it's, you know, it's matted up pretty good, so. If they're in here, they're on this side. Shade and depth. Even though it's not much. That was a good bass. It's a really nice. Bluegill in here. Yeah. Oh. That's a good I wonder if that's the one I had before. good to see. Oh, and it came out. Very nice fish. So, oh, there's a bigger one in there. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this is a good spot. Very good spot. I see another one cruising. Hmm. Let's see how big you are. We'll say goodbye to this one. Get him back in there. So the Elaztec as a frog, it's not like a hollow body frog, but it's still a frog. I love how 
it compresses. It just gets out of the way. It just makes for a good hook hookup percentage. All right, so we've had current from the incoming tide coming this way, but the outflow from whatever that pond is above the end of this creek is also coming this way. So it's, it's filling up right here. Um, one thing I want to go over in terms of your retrieval, you want to have your, you want to have it moving as soon as it touches the bottom or touches the, uh, touches down over there. And one critical thing, whether you're fishing a hollow bodied frog or a soft plastic floating one or whatever you got, um, is that you, you wait for the weight. In other words, the fish will blow up on that and you have to wait. You have to not set the hook until you feel them pulling it under and then move it. Let them capture it. Let them think, hey, I'm in the clear. I got this frog in my mouth. And then you can cross their eyes. And it takes tremendous uh, self-control to not, as soon as they blast it, because a lot of times they blast it, they miss. They don't suck it all the way in. And if it's still sitting right where they left it, there's something. That has got to be a snakehead. So if it's right where they left it, they're going to get, they're going to be able to come back and chomp on it. I got this snakehead buried in the weeds. But you got to wait for the weight. Wake you up here. Oh, big head, come back here. I gotta get all this slime out of the net again. Okay. These are the, the hooks I'm using. The Mustad KVD Grip Pin Soft Plastics Hook, 5 Oct. So what happens is the, you, know, you rig it in through the nose, out through the chin, and you get it past that little that little grip pin there and then you just poke it all the way through and I like to just just in and out skin hook but get it all the way through so it's it's held up but you still have a point there and it'll it'll compress and pull back and get that without gathering a lot of um, a lot of grass there. At least swing my rod tip to do the best job tracing that grass line as I possibly can. So this is the same spot where I got the 18 and a half and after we ran up in there and tangled with the snakehead and came back. I think it's been about 45 minutes. And in that period of time, this has gone from gin clear to, to muddy. And it's the tide coming in that brings all that, that mucky water. It was flushing out, you know, nice and clean when it was going out. Now that it's, the tide is coming in, it's, uh, it's bringing the mud with it. Yeah. Do some drag. Run. Uh, you're doing it right. 
just as a nice tidal large mouth should. Yep, came right out. Right, see you later, guy. Zoom back to his bank. So I'm close to wrapping it up for the day, but I'm heading back in this this point uh, in this channel swinging in here is kind of a mirror image of where I just was, so it's worth a shot. Worth a couple more skips. Was a good bite. I'm gonna put the jig on. It's always worth a follow up when they blow up on top water and don't get it. Give them something different. See you You're on this side. Yes, 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 yes. Follow up. Top water sometimes lets you know where they are. Even if you don't get them, they end up follow up with a jig. Very very distinctive dunk, and hope we can get him out. We got him out. Let's see what he is. Eighteen incher. Another nice one. All right, time to hit him. See you, guy. All right, before we wrap up for the day showing you how to fish the uh, the billy goat as a topwater bait basically frogging I want to point out in this creek that we were in every time the creek channel slammed into the bank you had deep water there caught a bunch of good fish there and then I got that last one there so that's kind of been the pattern for you know the last couple trips as I would find the outside bend in the creek channel and I'd find a little bit deeper water. Say at low tide everything's you know two feet or less on those spots you'd have four maybe five feet at, at most and really that's enough. That's all they need. That's all they want is a little bit more depth, a little bit more security from the overhanging trees and possibly a little bit cooler water in there with the shade.